We generally keep Dorona ready to go to sea at a moment's notice, and securing the cockpit furniture is typically all we need to do as we get underway. For multi-day passages, we might do some additional preparation, such as installing storm plates on the salon windows. This video shows some of the extra preparation we did for our 2017 passage 2800 nautical miles across the North Atlantic from Newport, Rhode Island to Kinsale, Ireland. Here James is installing the starboard side storm plates. The reason they're on is the biggest risk of the boat is even in terrible conditions the boat will probably be fine. The only thing is that if a window is ever broken and there's a water ingress you can lose the entire boat. It's nice having big windows, but for safety at sea what we do is we cover them with storm plates and these plates will help make it extremely unlikely that we lose a window. You can see it only takes about oh, three or four minutes to get this side up. The other side's a bit more work because there's no walkway, but the upside is there's only two windows. We keep the storm plates mounted against the stack on the boat deck. Here we transfer the two port side plates into the tender and we'll use the tender as a platform to install the plates. This one's a bit of a challenge, but once those two, once the two top screws are in, it's pretty much done. Usually we work at the dock for this. It's sort of an experiment to see if it's if it's faster and easier this way. Certainly faster. So far the, the tender's relatively stable, so it's not too bad. I probably should have powered it in a little bit closer to the boat. in the tanks so that we can bring them down below to make room for the bladders. They'll be sitting 600 gallons here and 600 gallons here. In order to do that we need to make, open up this space and the chairs will go up against there and the table will go over there. So it'll be full.
And where do you stow them? Downstairs, right beside where we, where the inverter is, nice dry location. A little bit challenging to get to, so I have to first move some things out of the way. Everything's out of the way and so we're ready to move these things back but first what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to find the um, the bungee strap not the bungee strap but the, um, the the trailer strap that goes around these to secure them oh yes those are with the bladders so I'll go get those okay yeah we should get the, we should get the bladders ready before these go away That looks like a bit of a tight spot to work. Yeah, it's tight, but we don't put them in here very often, so it's not it's not really that bad. But you're right. They're actually pretty easy to get to the location. It's getting the ratchet straps on that's usually the chore. Secure now, they will not move any seas, which is important because those things are heavy enough to do a lot of damage. We can have the whole area filled up with spares and parts, but smooth things out of the way easily and return it. Exactly. All done? Yeah, I think so. That's the that's the plug on the furnace, all the storm plates on, tenders back in place, got the scuba tanks put away. Getting pretty close. here is getting the deadlights out of storage. So we'll put them over our portholes. And the deadlights are metal covers that go over the portholes from the inside as opposed to the storm plates which are like sand shields that go on the outside. There are eight deadlights in total. The four for the guest stateroom are we just keep them in place held open. And these other ones, the large, two large ones are for the master stateroom and you need to actually open the window in order to put them on and off. And these ones are particularly important because the master stateroom portals are large and fairly close to the water line. Finally. Got them out? Yep. These are surprisingly heavy. Every time I lift them out, I'm amazed.
Just getting it aligned. What I do is I get it snugged up everywhere so they're all fitting in properly. And then make sure that it's touching all the way around nice and evenly. And then start to tighten it up evenly. Well, that looks good and strong. Get one more. And we'll be on our way. In addition to protecting the windows, the deadlights also make it nice and dark in the stateroom during the day. So when something's sleeping down here off watch, it's a little easier to sleep. challenging to put on is you have to actually remove the window from the hinge at the top. Yeah, so first you undo it, then take off the hinge bolt. You need to get both sides off and then slide the deadlight in there. The deadlight could be left on all the time, except that our blinds won't close and other things won't, won't work and it's not as much light in here. That's both hinge nuts off. And that's the hinge off. Both hinge pins back in. Yeah, I probably shouldn't complain as much as I do. That's actually not that hard to do. Removing a little curtain, and then we keep in the guest stateroom on the one window that can see through into the master. Definitely block out the light. And they do that. Designed just for the, the deadlights, whereas most of the other smaller windows, the deadlights just use the same um, bolts that keep the windows closed. So that's the two starboard side and the forward stateroom. Now James is working on the port lights in the, in the uh, port side of the forward stateroom. That's it. And this is the final dead leg going on in the galley. That's eight of them. Great. All right. So I'm just about to start the engine because we need to have hydraulic pressure in order to put a pin through the anchor to, to locate it so it cannot come free no matter what. In order to do, we normally keep it um, only pin it when we're at sea, and the reason being it just takes a, it takes a little bit longer to, to actually put the pin in, and it's plenty secure um, the way it is right now with with a, a rope pulling it back. 
But when we're at sea, we, we'd like it to be absolutely secure with no risk whatsoever. So we pin it. In order to do that, I have to start the engine. The key to the engine is here. Um, the reason it's not in is to remind me that I've got a cover on the end of the exhaust. We've had some big rains here. It's nice not to have any water down the exhaust. So let's go pull the cover off first. Switching the hydraulics on. And we've now taken control so the hydraulics are live. With the groceries I picked up yesterday and the order we got from Peapod this morning, the fridge is very full. So, lots of provisions for the long run all the way across the Atlantic. And any places in the fridge where we aren't completely full, we've got little spacers in place to make sure that nothing moves. And we've also got bars in front of the, the bottom shelf. It has two bars, one in the front and one kind of in the middle. And then we also have a bar midway up as well to prevent anything from falling out when we're underway. getting ready to head off from Newport, Rhode Island to Kinsale, Ireland. What we need to do is get all of our cockpit furniture folded up and put away. The chairs will all stack against here and the table will stack against the walkway there. And right now we're in the middle of the front tool system that we're waiting to go through before we can leave and it's here with uh, a lot of rain and wind so not a great day to be outside but the final stage we'll set ladders out. One here, 300 gallons each, one here and one there. Tomorrow we'll fuel up. And sometime between uh, tomorrow night and Sunday morning, we'll uh, head off to Kinsel, Ireland. Just filling up the bladders so we can position them with air in them, make sure that they're centered up properly. Once this is done, we'll suck them back down and then fill them tomorrow. It's not vital for these, but it's hard to get them exactly right when they're, when they're folded up. It's hard to tell exactly the right place to, to go. For the forward bladder, it's vital. Getting ready to fuel for the big trip, and wouldn't you know it, it's pouring rain. So we get to take 2,000 gallons of fuel in, in less than perfect conditions. But we are getting the fuel, and it's fun to be able to get it in docks. So it's a convenient place to get it. But it is really pouring. You can see the bladder is just getting ready to be filled in the back. And Got another bladder forward. We've got 500 gallons now on the starboard side, so we switched over the port side because we're getting a, more than a three degree list. So we'll balance over each side, get, get the onboard tanks filled, and then we'll switch over to the bladders. 
so we filled both of our main tanks and we've got 835 gallons exactly in each and now we're working on filling up the port side bladder and that'll be another 300 gallons and then when we're done with that one then we'll move on to the starboard side bladder and that'll be another 300 gallons right now they're filled with air for positioning so it looks like it's full on the starboard side but it's just got air in it well weather's getting better tanks are a lot more full we've got both both uh, side tanks full to 835 gallons the tank the tank on deck behind me is six is probably 300 gallons it's full this one's probably got 180 gallons in it so far should be done in the next 20 minutes or so um, and then after that we've got the forward bladder to do And we're using a rope to keep the nozzle, the fill nozzle, up above the level of the fuel in the bladder so it makes it easier to fill. Probably 100 gallons in it right now. The back two are basically full. One's, one needs a little bit more in it, but we're pretty close. So we probably need another 200 and something in this one. This one's a little more difficult to place because it doesn't fit perfectly in the curve of the Portuguese bow because it's a rectangular. But, so it's important to get there are no creases in it and position it very carefully. That's one reason we fill it with air before we fill it with diesel. Okay, here's the final job on the front bladder. You can see it's nice and full. In fact, this is one that's I find a little bit counterintuitive. When we first when we first started using bladders, I was thinking to leave enough space in it so that there's room for expansion. It turns out that if there's space in it, the, the fuel moves around, sloshing back and forth. It's really hard on the bladder, hard on all the gear. Filling it absolutely as full as possible makes for a rock solid package. Notice how notice how full this is. Good and solid. And our experience has been, if it's full like that, it's nice and stable. Let's have a look at those stern bladders. I talked earlier about the counterintuitive importance of having a very full bladder. It gives it a nice, stable ride, and if, there, if it's not completely full, you'll end up with ripples banging into each side. It's actually very hard on the equipment. Notice how full this one is. I can almost stand on that bladder. There's Girona, ready to go for the big trip. One thing you'll notice is, if you check the water line, the boat's low in the water. It's if we there's really we're carrying as much fuel as you could possibly carry in a 52 at this point. Have a look at the stern; it's particularly low.